going to find Dr. Lutz. Another cowboy hat in sight. Looking for a cowboy Michael. I'm worried that he's out there. I texted him. And seems like he doesn't have a lot of uh, ability to know where we are. There he is. That's me. This is decorative boo. Mm-hmm. We did it. Didn't didn't bring the decorative hat though. Together, together at last again. Yeah, first time in five years. Mm -hmm. Good, uh, good seeing you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Howdy, friends and neighbors. Here we are, Range Touch, live in Niwot, Colorado. And what are we doing here, Cameron? Uh, look at snow. Right over there, there's some snow. Look at celebrities. Brad Pitt? Whoa, he's in the snow. Robert Redford? <laughs> They're having snowball fights. Juliette Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> nothing? <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing. I don't. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, Juliet Lewis's dad doing an Irish accent? <laughs> Michael, why are we here? We're here to see The Shining. You already said that. Yeah, I know that, but why are, why are we here to see The Shining opera? Well, we're here to do it for Steve, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so it's only been put on one time before, and uh, uh, some people reached out to us. Very uh, thankful to the Range Touch uh, 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 fan who reached out to tell us about it, because we might not have known. So uh, we had someone reach out, and uh, we decided to do it. So that's why we're here. We're, you know, you might have already seen some interesting content from our time here in Colorado. But, uh, you know, Michael, what do we have planned? Uh, in addition to seeing the opera of The Shining, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take a little trip up to Estes Park and see the Stanley Hotel, which was the inspiration for the Overlook itself. Uh, not only are we going to see the Overlook, we're going to stay the night there. We're gonna stay there, we're gonna get haunted. I told someone about this the other day, and she said, I would be too scared. So we're uh, brave. Extremely brave. Mm -hmm. We're very brave. Uh, that's well known about us and my uh, my family in general. Very mm -hmm. brave. I believe we're considered some of the bravest podcasts uh, out there. Yeah, I think Just King Things is probably the most brave podcast that exists. Um, but yeah, so we got some other stuff. We're going to do a little bit of shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a little bit of running around in Colorado. Uh, higgledy piggledy. Get wild. We're doing this. We don't do a lot of outdoor stuff. We're really indoor kids. That's mm -hmm. kind of what the success of <laughs> the Ranch Touch uh, property. <laughs> buy network. indoor kids for indoor yeah, kids. Yeah, it really is a buy indoor kids for indoor kids. I don't really hear a lot of people saying, hey, I went hiking and I was listening to your shows. Mm -hmm. We don't get that feedback very often. Mm -hmm. But if you are going hiking and listening to the show, this is a video piece. So that's gonna be hard. So thanks so much for uh, supporting us here at Range Touch. It's only because of Patreon support that we're able to do cool stuff like this and report from on the ground. Uh, by the time that you're seeing this, we already have a special podcast episode that we recorded. We haven't done it yet, but we will have recorded uh, the morning after we see The Shining Opera. So you're gonna get a kind of a bonus ode dedicated to that. And uh, we should have some other cool stuff. So thanks so much for supporting us and we really appreciate it. And uh, if people enjoy this, then we will do the thing that we threaten to do all the time, which is the Stephen King East Coast Tour. We will see the Green Goblin truck. Yes. The Stephen King East Coast Tour, theoretically in the future, would include seeing the Green Goblin truck, going to Wilmington, North Carolina, and then going to the gazebo where the murder happens in the dead zone. <laughs> and that's it. Do you have anything to, to, uh, to add, Michael? Do you have any thoughts or feelings or opinions about Colorado so far? I have a good feeling about this place. Cowboy Michael has a good feeling about this place. D do this, do this. This is the thing, if you, if you come to, if you see us in public, in the future you have to do this. Mm -hmm. And not, don't make eye contact. Mm -hmm. This is the official range touch sign. Yeah, this is us. Um, but anyway, so we're here and we're happy to do it. It's getting a little bit chilly now, getting a little bit scared. Uh, there's no one else around. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed we haven't seen any people since we got here? Yeah, it's interesting how there is absolutely no one in the entire state of Colorado. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. I saw a bunch of horses, though. Like something out of a Stephen King novel. Okay. <laughs>
So, uh, hey, we're here. Howdy. We came out to Colorado. We thought it's gonna be really important to get the full experience. Part of the full experience of that is making sure that Cowboy Michael, um, no decorative boot, you can notice. No decorative boot. Yet, we're getting there. But uh, also, they don't let you have a hat on an airplane. It's like illegal. So we're gonna try on a few hats here to see what fits Cowboy Michael. So let's try, let's try several hats. Do you know what size hat you are? Absolutely not, let's find out. Do you have like a big hat head? I have a huge hat head. Let's, let's figure it out. I have to try it, I have to try it for brunch. Yep. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Not good. This is interesting. This is big enough widthways, mm -hmm. but not this ways. Oh. It's actually too narrow in this direction. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. It's a, yeah. It's like... That's okay. This is like it was meant to be. It looks good. <laughs> So I think an important part of this is to determine what the cowboy hat does for you. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can ask you some trivia questions with and without the hat on. Okay, okay. okay so okay. first question is going to be, uh, no, let's do it without the hat Okay, first. without okay. the hat. Okay, control. Yeah, control. Okay. Uh, well, how do you best control a horse? Mm. Love and affection. Okay, great. Okay. Let's, let's put the hat on. Okay. How do you best control a horse? You just gotta show that varmint who's in charge. Wow. Mm. Wow. So really there's a lot of cowboy energy that comes yeah. right out of there. Yeah. Huh? It really seems like it unlocks something for me. It really does. Uh, can we, uh, let's, uh, let's take the hat off. Now how would you just stand normally without a cowboy hat on? Well I guess it's how I'm doing right now. Okay, just normal. Mm -hmm. Just a, you're just a regular fella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just mm -hmm. hanging out here not wearing a cowboy hat. Not wearing a cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. Put the hat on. Cowboy hat on. Mm -hmm. All right. Casual standing. <laughs> mm, not great. Okay. Not quite as friendly to the head as this hat. That's is, really. really nice. The problem is this isn't truly a cowboy hat. You're this right. is Outback Michael. I think. Well, well, I think what we've discovered is that the best cowboy hat is not a cowboy hat at all. <laughs> it's whatever hat fits your head. It allows the cowboy in your heart to ride. It really is like you've been struck here by the, <laughs> the fact that you, there's a hat that you can wear. Mm-hmm. I just growing up, I had so much struggle. All the kids were wearing hats, and I couldn't wear one because my head was too big. They would call me No Hat. Michael No Hat is what they would say. I, I really thought as they went four wheeling off into the distance. I wanted the sticky tag with it for any reason, but I can just. Look wait, wait, wait. Away. I think everyone did a lot of work for it, so I think we're going to take that. Tag. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank it, you. It's it's a it's a souvenir. Yes. yes exactly. Thank you. Have a good awesome. One. So much. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Play some damn bebop. I'm playing some damn bebop! <laughs> what am I going to say about it other than that it is Mr. Megorium's adjustatorium chiropractic for people and animals. I like the, the implication that a person's not an animal. Mm -hmm. Like, this is some real, yeah. like, anti Aristotelian yes. argumentation. <laughs> Man is an adjustable animal. <laughs> 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 Goose poop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can you please show me the cover? I like your smiling too. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Call of the Wild and White Thing by Jack London. Oh! The little book of Mediterranean. Oh! Uh, oh! 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 Longmont. Uh, it's, oh, looking at the sun, 11.15 or so. And yeah, so we're just going to kind of uh, tool around a little bit for the day. Uh, you know. Uh, so what, what do we got planned, Michael? Do you have an idea? Well, I think we're going to check out a couple of bookstores. Uh, 
and with a wide variety of definitions for book, that will include some comics, one hopes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that's something you're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, today today's the big day. We're doing it. Today's the day of The Opera, The Shining by Lord and Miller. And so, uh, so we're excited about that. That's later today. I'm basically going to wear the, the exact same clothes you're seeing me wear. I'm going to change my shirt. You'll get to see that later. That's a little uh, hussy style uh, planting for the future to pay off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how they do it. Okay, well, uh, that's a little sign off for this little part of the video for, uh, you know, as our catchphrase is for the video content, uh, indoor content for indoor kids. So here we go. <laughs> What do we got here? Duck poop. Oh my gosh, it's you guys. That's us. Yeah, that's us. So we commissioned this before we got here. We actually spent $8,000 on uh, commissioning a child to make this. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the airplane that brought us here. Mm -hmm. These are the emails that we exchanged with fans. Uh, this is an, an arrow with two sides to signal pooping back and forth. This, this is a phone. Kids these days don't know what those are. I don't know what this is. This was like artistic license and I'm mad about it now. That is the at symbol that people use to communicate on Twitter. This is the house where Michael lives now so that he can run for mayor. Spoilers. This is music uh, invented by Napster. And this is a camera, the least important of all of these things to, to the extent where it is uh, in fact rotating off the map. This is the sun, you gotta praise it. This is some sort of uh, large fart. We're here at uh, St. Nick's, you're gonna have to say all the things. So St. Nick's Collectibles, Toys, and Antiques. Gotcha, and we're here with Nick, and uh, Michael, of course, we know is a Gremlins super fan, and so Nick's gonna talk to us a little bit about this Gremlins 2 candy container or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 so this is from 1990, and it is, uh, this is what you would have went into, like a grocery store, a convenience store, found this on their shelves, and I'll open it so you guys can actually see it. And this has never been uh, used, never been uh, sold. This, they probably bought this or it probably sat on somebody's sh back store shelf and then somebody got it in an auction or something like that. But it is all the little, and it still has the original cardboard in here. That's all the little Gremlins candy heads. You got Gizmo back here in the back. And these have candy in them. You would, I would nev nev never <laughs> suggest anybody eat it. Yeah. But yeah, still got candy in these. And these are all your little Gremlin heads. And these are... You can find these usually online, like people sell the individual heads, mm -hmm. um, but finding a, a brand new in the box, never been used for all all the heads in here is, is, is a lot more rare. And yeah, really neat, of so. course. So, it, yeah, that's it, what that it, is. It's interesting too that they're, like some of them are their actual Gremlins too, yeah. but that's like a good old fashioned spike. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they had the different characters, um, and so that's what I love about this one. We have another one that's a, a Ghostbusters one over there, but mm -hmm. it's just Slimer. Uh, where oh, this weird. one was, yeah, it was just, it was a, a bunch of different variety, yeah, which yeah. I liked a lot. So it's really neat. It's one of the pieces, I got this in an estate auction I won, and I don't know, he had this one and that one were both weird. in the estate. It was pretty can, cool. Can we get so. a close up really quick? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, so man, take those are so cool. And I'll close it so you can get close up of the, the box too, but yeah, they're really neat. Oh my gosh, wow, those are amazing. <laughs> yeah, the colors, I love the color scheme. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely oh, 80s, 80s, 80s yeah. color <laughs> scheme, yep, 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 yep. Wow. Very cool, so. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to see this one. Yeah, the boxes. Yeah, and so they have little Gremlins candies inside. You can see right here on the, with that it had little Gremlin candies inside the dispenser. So, yeah. So yeah, what uh, was that? Thirty plus years old. So that's yes, very fun. <laughs> Almost forty at this yeah. point. Yeah, uh, so. Gremlins too is what? That's eighty six. Eighty nine. Yeah, this, these yeah. are from eighty nine. Oh, so yeah, these yeah. are from eighty nine. Yeah. So yeah, the, the little I'm bit so of sorry for getting the Gremlins. Uh, as soon as I, 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 I said that, Keith, oh, I just saw the Gremlins two logo had to gravitate toward it. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. really cool. Yeah, I loved it when I got this. It, things like this I love having in the store because of the fact that even if they don't sell, it's just a, a fun talking point. And people love to come, kind of gravitate and, and look at it and see it. So, uh, so yeah, I enjoy I enjoy having those unique unique style things here.
it's changed my life. I'm so glad we got to come back this way. So uh, we're here with Jennifer from Upper Colorado, and uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit in the venue and see what's going on and, yeah. and check things out. So uh, uh, this, I feel like this is a real Discovery Channel like. <laughs> Let's do it. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna do that. And maybe sure we'll is. stop and talk about stuff. Yeah, so you're in the lobby of the Ellie Hawkins Opera House. Great. Right okay. now. So how long have you worked with the with the opera? Uh, almost two years. Okay. So I started the pandemic. Okay, that's got to be a weird time to start. Which was a really weird time yeah. and move. I moved oh. here oh. and I started. Maybe. Okay. So this is kind of my first typical season. Okay, well that's it's exciting. Been fun. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Allison also moved here during uh, the thing. Hey. Not nice. to break the fourth wall on this. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> break the fourth wall. Yeah. Calm before the storm. You can see most of the set mm -hmm. up on stage. Might look a little familiar. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so we're coming in. Um, this is what the third performance. Yes. For this? Yeah, third we opened Saturday to mm -hmm. a sold-out house. Ooh, that's Had amazing. a show on Tuesday. Uh -huh. a show tonight, and then Friday, Sunday. Great. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And I have very purposefully remained ignorant yeah. about like the contents <laughs> cool. of this adaptation yeah. uh, okay. because you said, okay. I think you told me uh, the last time we chatted that yeah. this is a little bit more of a purposeful adaptation of the novel yes. rather than the films, right? So I'm very forget excited about it. Well, don't forget the film. You know, it's, a, it's an iconic adaptation <laughs> of, of course. the novel for sure. But um, this is based solely on the novel. Gotcha. So the libretto is based on the novel. Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, all of the action is based on the novel. And, Got it not the action and the ending that you see in the movie, which is Got very it. different from which is the truly, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Anything particularly shocking happened during the rehearsals that was, um, uh, Like, know. unexpected? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think it's kind opening, of a haunting kind of deal. Right? Opening yeah. night, um, the scene where Jack is breaking down the bedroom door mm -hmm. with his croquet mallet, yep. the mallet totally busted apart <laughs> and, and flew everywhere, and they had to give him a new one, so... I saw in the notes for the next show, use metal croquet mallet for that scene, and then give him the wooden one for the for subsequent everything else. scene. Uh, um, how, so how, did that, how did that happen? I mean, what was it just like, yeah, I oh, guess he was into it. I don't know. Oh, okay. Like, you'll see. Like, he oh, yeah. okay. smashes into the door gotcha. with gusto. It's fun. It's a fun watch. You'll, yeah, you'll absolutely. like it a lot. My favorite scenes are the party scenes where all of the ghosts from the midnight masquerade appear. Yeah. You can't miss him. You'll know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very cool. I don't think I'm going to get through and be like, I don't know what she was talking about. Wait, who? Sure what now? One. The what now? because there are a lot of traditionalists who are fans of the tried and true, the La Boheme's, the La mm -hmm. Traviata's, mm -hmm. the, the Carmen's, and this is different. Yeah, you don't think like, opera like, and then think Stephen King. Exactly, <laughs> like this is, this is very different for a traditional audience. The music is different, uh, it, it looks different, it sounds different, the subject matter is different, so mm -hmm. um, you just have to accept some folks aren't gonna like it. It happens, yeah. you know, as with anything else. Um, Seems but like it's pretty popular, though. Absolutely, like but we're seeing. Yeah. I have heard from a few of our patrons that are fans of more traditional operas that it wasn't quite their cup of tea, mm. and that's fine. Yeah. And there are just as many folks, if not more, that are telling us how much they love it. So mm -hmm. it just goes to show you that it's important to put this on stage, regardless of who might like it, who might not like it. It's still, it's still important that we share it mm -hmm. with the community, you know, because Have you heard anything relevant. specifically about this production yet? Any sort of like good feedback that you want to share? Um, a lot of the feedback I've heard is 
about this wonderful set mm -hmm. that you see in front of you and how it's almost like a character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the opera. It almost comes alive, you will oh, see, yes. because of the different animations and projections um, that are on it. And it's a character in the book. Like, right. the hotel is... Right, right, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a huge part of the story. So people have been really impressed with just the spectacle mm -hmm. of it, um, how it kind of honors... Stephen King's story that mm -hmm. really boils down to it being the story of a man and his family doing their best mm -hmm. against very <laughs> insurmountable odds. Right, <laughs> Strange <yes>. things <laughs> happening. It really kind of strips it down to the core of Jack Torrance as, you know, a character, mm -hmm. a, a real man who has experienced trauma and the hotel kind of gets the best of them. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the, the novel itself is, you know, it, it's a perfect fit, really, I think, uh, mm -hmm. counterintuitively, because the novel itself is structured like a five-act tragedy, right? It's, it's literally mm -hmm. broken into five sections. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Stephen King uh, has talked in interviews about, like, thinking about it as a play. Uh, sure. Oh, so, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there is a lot, even if it is non-traditional, I think there is uh, a lot to that, and especially uh, the spectacle of the opera itself. Uh, yeah. There's a great story here, and what we, what they did with the opera is just use the power of music mm -hmm. and stagecraft to make the story just even more powerful than it is when you're reading the book, and it's kind of inside your head. Now, That's I, what I, know, I think, at least. I, don't yeah. know. I know you've seen it already, and yes. I've remained unspoiled. Yes, but you're unspoiled. Can, but can you tell me one way or the other if it turns into a giant black manta ray at the end? A giant black manta ray? Which happens at very, the end Very of the specific novel. detail really? from the book. That I does read not the book, really. <laughs> yes. It's in like oh. one sentence it's, at the, in the, when it burns down and explodes at the end. A yeah. giant black manta ray. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's like the core ghost or whatever yeah. like swoops out into the sky. Really? It's just, it, yeah. Yeah, and so does that happen? I don't remember. It sounds like it doesn't happen. <laughs> no. Okay. No, it doesn't. I'm right. going to have to reread the book One because star. you guys just <laughs> blew my mind. Now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to travel here, say, from sea level, mm -hmm. and realize they're at 5,000 feet and everything that entails with the dry air and less oxygen. Um, you just saw the oxygen tank backstage, just in case anyone needs a hit <laughs> mid-performance. Yes. Um, and a few of our principal dressing rooms are also climate controlled, so they can make the air a little wetter and more comfortable for them as they prepare to go on stage. And, at the top of their lungs for three hours. Yeah, you need that water in your, you need all that humidity in your lungs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I guess there's a reason that opera was invented by Italians. Yeah, yeah. Right, yes. right there on the water. A coastal yeah. Yes. <laughs> tie for the opera. I just don't know which iconography is the best for me, that best represents my cowboy spirit. It's probably not the horse with the cross. I think it's probably just the horse by itself. I was gonna say just the cross. I don't have that. Do you think I'm more of a longhorn hat or just a horse head? I think horse head. I think a horse head.
right, first step. Going mm -hmm. the wrong way. Woo! So just go out this way, and then you can make the left. Okay. I'm gonna knock this drive. So here we are. We're setting out for Estes Park. Now, here's a question for you. Yeah. Estes or Estes? Uh, I don't know. I think maybe wherever your feeling lies in the moment. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they're pretty freewheeling out here in Colorado. No, uh, I've just, I've just really come to this shiny knowledge in this very moment when I'm yeah. driving here. Making a right here now? Yeah. Uh, it's called Denver Croquet. Mm-hmm. Estes Park is closer to Boulder. Look at that. Look at that little teen driving that little beep beep. <laughs> we should we should name all the things that we see that are not on the camera. Mm -hmm. Whoa, a polar bear! But oh, we got uh, we got Allison here. We got John here, our buddy John here. If you listen to the bonus episode, where we're doing the shining uh, thing, he's in that episode too. And then uh, we got, of course, Michael. Mm -hmm. Your darling boy, my darling boy, Michael. And we're driving to Estes Park. Whoop whoop. Mm -hmm. I uh, hope they have a playground. I hope they have a juggalo. A one, <laughs> only one. Uh, what would your energy level be if we were driving along and we just saw a juggalo? A juggalo, like yeah. in full in full makeup? Yeah. I mean, I'd be pretty hyped by it. Gotta be honest. Yeah, me too. I think we'd be uh, obligated to stop. Yeah. Do a do a little interview. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, we got what? Is that the Rockies over there? Over here? Yeah. Yeah. These are the Rocky Mountains. Okay. Okay. Just off camera, you're seeing one of the most beautiful sights in uh, the American uh, imaginary. Mm -hmm. And uh, just over there, there's a gnome. Yeah, there is a gnome. There is a wow. Gnome. Cool. <laughs> if I'm going to keep an animal that I have to make nude, <laughs> I won't want it to be the biggest nudist thing it can be. In the book, Halloran tries to go up 36 mm -hmm. and then gets turned around and has to go up 25, which is uh, east of Niwot. Mm -hmm. And then I think connects up with 66 here and goes in this way. That's the detour. Wow. 100% accurate. Social realism. This gives you some character for The Shining, I'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a character that I might not have had before, which uh, if I were driving a car that was dying, mm -hmm. you know, like eating shit all the way up this thing, which mm -hmm. of course the, uh, the bug mm -hmm. was doing. You know, it was having a hard time cranking its way on up these mountains. That would be distressing to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if Steve had that experience. You know, I wonder if his car was struggling getting up these mountains. Or if he just did the same thing we're doing, which was drive up and think, this would suck if my car didn't work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, he's a brilliant mind for speculative thinking. <laughs> you know, imagining experiences beyond his own, so. I just think it's a really bad idea to start talking about post Malone as if Malone itself has ended. Yeah. Well, I'm over this. Mm hmm. I'm done with this shit. Sheen wore off of this pretty quick. Yeah. There aren't, like, even any, like, animals to gather resources from. No. Yeah, when I drove Very... my cowboy through all this stuff, we had a lot more going on. <laughs> Very few interactables. Yeah. No quest markers. No, there's a quest marker, but it's one of those like Bethesda style things where you can't take a direct route. <laughs> you, you gotta go through Nipton to get there. Mm. I don't think that Sidewinder town is a real place. I don't think it is. <laughs> no. But it does become a recurring king location. Oh, well, it's Estes, right? Like Estes itself. Yeah. Because uh, the thing, you know, the Shining, you know, kind of reformulates the geography a little bit. But to put the hotel farther up the mountain than mm -hmm. any town. So I think he's got to, like, turn it into a... Uh... Except that Estes is also referenced in the book. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great way to get out of uh, people claiming that you base the town on mm. the real town. <laughs> be like, no, the real town's there. Oh, does, so does the Stanley show up in the book? And it's like, over oh, there, there's a different hotel. It's not the haunted one. <laughs> it's a different one. I don't think so. Okay. Holy shit, there's a geodesic dome over there. Really? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. oh. It's I, a strangely popular style of domicile in the mountains out here. Interesting. Uh, so it's, if the boulders hit it, they deflect off. Yeah. The geodesic dome is the strongest form of dome. So looking down into the valley here, that's Estes Park. Ah. The, the valley itself? Uh, the town that you can see in there. Okay. Can you see the Stanley? Identify it for me. Eagle Eye. There it is. 
it, or you see yeah, it? Yeah, it's right there. Clearly. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Wow! It's got a cool look about it, eh? All right, I'm glad we saw it. So I can just turn around here. Yep, yeah. we're done. We verified it. <laughs> Let's call the people at Snopes and update them. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. The Stanley Hotel is real. Mm -hmm. We do that and we get in trouble years later because we found out it was just a big painted facade. <laughs> it was just a, a big matte painting someone put over there. <laughs> like the Hollywood sign. Yes. Oh, by the way, Hollywood sign, not real. Mm -hmm. Big matte painting they put on top of the mountain. Yeah. Um, I mean, where else but Hollywood? Yep. Yeah. I've seen her free Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Same. Uh, have you been navigating with your phone the whole time? No. Yeah. You were just doing it by mm -hmm. ear. I was feeling the vibrations. Animal magnetism. Mm -hmm. Of course. Gotta stand under a tree. The hotel was calling to him. I'm over here. Here I am. I'm the <laughs> hotel. Come here and spend some money. <laughs> it would be less scary if it sounded like that. Stop, Mr. Halloran. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Halloran. I want to eat this little boy. <laughs> Mr. Hall I've got too many ducks in me, Mr. Halloran. I need you to, to, to turn them into food. <laughs> well, we made it. Yeehaw. It's only open until 8 o'clock, though. Oh, wait, look. There's a QR code for Stephen King's complete miniseries. i got to scan this QR code. We're at the Stanley Hotel, uh, finally. Um, took a little bit of driving. I'm sure you saw a little bit of that. But here we are, and uh, it's exciting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm calling Michael out here, but we went into the hotel to check in, and he got a little glimmer in his eye. Mm -hmm. Well, he had fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun time. I, I, I got. I don't know if I'm a glimmer in the eye kind of guy, but uh, I did get excited. It was exciting to see it. Anyway, Michael, what do you think so far? Uh, sure is the Stanley Hotel. It really is. Yeah. I don't know what I expected, but this is it. Mm -hmm. the, the thing I got is what I expected. I mean, I'm really glad that they re redid the interior decoration from the miniseries, because yes. that was pretty horrendous 90s stuff. I mean, hopefully maybe they have always had better taste, and they just did that for, for the film. But. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back and look at the, uh, at the miniseries, because I believe that this exterior was used as the porch that they talked on when Halloran is, like, leaving and all that stuff. I don't uh -huh. think it is that, the one on the actual... So we're, we're actually staying... Let me back up. We're staying at the Lodge, which is kind of attached to it, and it's, you know, nearly 100 years old as well. But the mainline Stanley Hotel is both undergoing some construction and was booked up, I guess. So mm -hmm. I was saying over here, it's great. Uh, the yeah. rooms feel the same vibe. Uh, yeah. Notably, no hauntings over here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got someone looking at us from their window up there. It's yeah. creepy. Well, that may be a haunting. That's probably a haunting, yeah. but not the haunting. Okay. Not 1998's greatest hit, the haunting. Uh, I don't know. What, what else do you what, Directed what do you by Jan de Bont. It is Jan de Bont. Uh, beautiful, mm -hmm. by the way. That's uh, uh, the big belly bump over there. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone calls it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we drove up here and it's pretty wild. Um, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. We're going we're gonna to eat at the restaurant here. We're going to kind of wander around a little bit, see what's up. We're about to take a tour. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't do any video on the tour, unfortunately. Really? Uh, yeah, I just read on the thing. <gasps> That's okay, but we'll do a video right after the tour. And you know what? They can't stop us from just doing the tour route again and mm -hmm. talking through it. Mm -hmm. They'll have already given us the information. We're, mm -hmm. we're robbing it right out from under mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of an Ocean's Eleven situation. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get video of me last time talking about the... The, the Stephen King listserv uh, convention that happened here. I don't believe we did. Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you share that story here? That's oh, good. oh, when I was very tiny on the Stephen King listservs that I talk about on the show sometimes, uh, they had a convention that was here at the Stanley, and that was my uh, first uh, moment where I was like, what I really want to do is meet people from the internet uh, mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. It was your first FOMO, your first uh, physical FOMO. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. No, everyone on the listserv was like, man, I'm having such a great time, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm there, I'm just this little kid. I can't take myself to Colorado. That's no. not going to happen. No. I love the idea that there are people here at this beautiful, idyllic hotel, and they were like, i got to get back in my room and start posting. <laughs> i got to get on IRC over there or, or whatever. They had a little costume cotillion and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Maybe there's that right now. We don't know. Yeah. We got a map that's going to show us all kinds of stuff. But yeah, so we'll be around a little bit. I don't know our ability to get video, but I bet we'll take a camera to dinner and make someone tell us uh, not to use it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we'll do that. I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, insert shots. I'm sure I'll do some, uh, uh, or maybe Allison will do some uh, talking over it later, some post. <laughs>
<laughs> like, and and here we are. Look at the Stephen King fans like, at the place. Well, that is like how no it freeze, is, like slow zoom in on our faces, mm-hmm. though they didn't know it yet. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't make it down that mountain at all anyway so we're here for about another eight hours and then we're uh-huh. gonna be leaving yeah and uh we're excited about it i uh i like that there's that tangle of cords right there it feels very uh unromantic mm-hmm. and just very necessary like yep it's a hotel yeah we got cords and a printer that's right Enough, enough chords. We're trying to figure out the physical geography of the miniseries and how they built the stuff, but the hotel was in that angle. Yeah. From the thing. No, no, no. It's the opposite. So it must. You're right. You're exactly right. So it has to be yeah. over there. Yeah. And this is over here, supposedly, where like the topiary was the animals but obviously you know not really there well i think that yeah it's got to be like right there the cgi topiary sorry say that again (laughs) say again the topiary were puppets not cgi good to know uh but the puppets didn't work so so they replaced them with cgi yeah it was cgi but uh yeah so it had to be like right there and the playground was over there maybe that's Mr. Hotel himself. He invented yeah. the idea of the hotel. Yeah. Mr. Hotel? Sta- yeah, that's Hotel Stanley. He uh, famously wandered across the American West and founded hotels. Yeah, he invented the hotel. Mm-hmm. Cool. So we were having a conversation with someone uh, who uh, down in, in Denver who was telling us that they know someone who got on the roof of the hotel. And you know who else got on the roof of the hotel? Jack Torrance himself. He found a wasp nest up there. And I can't, I, if I could rank my, like, top ten worst experiences, it would be being on top of that hotel with a wasp attacking me. It really does give you a sense of it, though, of like, oh, that was bad. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be up there when that happened. No, not at all. I thought it was fine. I thought, no, no, no big no, MBD. <laughs> also, I do want to say this. Steve's whole conception that one person could caretake this whole hotel for a winter and would go up there and replace shingles on that thing, yeah. just a random human being... That's the wildest thing I've ever heard. I, we didn't really talk about that in the No, we didn't. I remember thinking as I was reading it, I was, I was, when I first read it as a kid, I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Adult men can do anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, but then I was reading it uh, for, for the show, and I was like, man, it's, it seems like a lot to ask one guy to stay here throughout the winter and replace the shingles. Yeah, and maybe he did do it. I don't know. <laughs> or, or, you know, maybe, like, that comes from a real thing right. that, that uh, Steve heard or whatever. But looking at it now, that seems nearly impossible. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they weren't doing, like, a whole replacement, but... I don't know. But no, he did a whole wing. Yeah, no, he did do a whole wing. So, and that's, like, one of them. We're looking at it. It's very exciting. I think we're we're, uh, hogging the, uh, in front of the hotel, so... Well... I'm happy to unhog. Michael, this is us in the edit. You know, I love uh-huh. to insert us in the edit. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's great. And we made an Time error. for an ad break. Time for an ad break right here. No. Uh, so you, people who have spent about 40 minutes watching this documentary so far have noted that I've mostly used intertitles to mm-hmm. get us from point A to point B. But we're about to experience something that is a large time jump and perhaps a characteristics jump for the two of us Mm -hmm. because you've watched the rough cut and we act a little different a little bit 
And it's a big uncut piece of footage that people are about to see. Now, I don't know how much we want to talk about this, but the Stanley Hotel does have a whiskey bar. (laughs) (laughs) Multiple types of old fashioned. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Anyway, well, I don't know. Uh, Do you want to tell a quick story about how we got Reagan, (laughs) our tour guide, to come hang out with us? Well, uh, our tour guide, who was a young man named Reagan, uh, gave an excellent tour, uh, seemed to know quite a bit about the Stanley, and we invited him to come meet us for drinks in the bar uh, when his shift was over, if that was a thing that he was allowed to do. We also tipped him for the tour in case that made him more interested in coming to talk to us. We also also mentioned that we were doing a Stephen King podcast in case he uh, was hungering for podcast fame. Right. So, right. Uh, and he was he was kind enough to come down and see us, actually, after after we had our wine. Uh huh. And uh, and our dinner. I had. Uh, what did you do? You remember what you had for dinner? I know this, these are the facts that people care about. Yeah, I, I don't remember. It was a pasta, I think, maybe. I had three very large impossible meatballs that were like the size of my fist. Yeah, I think I had like a bolognese or something. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then we had dessert. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Reagan showed up and we were, uh, as the immortal bard would say, in our cups. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. said, hey, you want to go look at some rooms that we don't do on the tour every time? And we said, yeah, we want to do that. Of course we do. And uh, so we, I I don't know if we say it in the footage, but we went into the ballroom slash additional room. I don't know what the room is actually called, but it is in the Shining miniseries where uh, where Play Some Damn Bebop is recorded, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is the place where Stephen King appears and does all of his dancing and whatnot. Uh, so hugely important for us, of course. Um, but yeah, so if you see us uh, giggling, or, or I'm touching my face a lot in the footage for some reason. We're doing a lot of this, both of us. We, we are doing a like, lot. We're like very thoughtful. So uh, that's what you're about we're to focusing see. focusing really hard. We're foc- I'm focusing so hard. And I'm like trying to ask questions that like don't set. I was like, because I was like, all right, this is being recorded. This is for posterity. We need to make sure that we ask good questions. And you be the judge, dear viewer listener. Of course, we've still got this one around. This is where the whole orchestra was, right? Now, of course, aside from that, uh, Elizabeth Wilson, the lady in the tub in The Shining, yeah, uh, this is the room that she landed in. That whole uh, explosion back in oh, 1911 yeah. became the whole boiler room scene. Yeah. What that was, all these wall-mounted torches you see in here, these were not electrical fixtures back in the day. These were acetylene gas torches, right? Of course. This was the first fully electric hotel west of the Mississippi, but we knew when we had the place designed uh, back in like 1906 that it was gonna be a very faulty system, right? So in addition to the electrical system, they also had a backup ses- uh, system of acetylene gas torches throughout the place, just for a little bit of light, not if, but when the power goes out, right? Mm-hmm. That took about a year and a half to bite us in the ar- uh, ass pretty darn hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1911, storm rolls through Estes Park, knocks out power to the entire place no problem we had this place set up we had you know practice for it right yeah. we gathered up all 200 or so guests in the main building we put them out in that concert hall that whole thing ex- no, <laughs> uh, we just put them out there for a little bit of uh of uh entertainment while we sent the staff into the basement turning the uh, valves getting that acet- acetylene flowing throughout the place a bunch of scentless explosive gas running throughout the hotel that couldn't go wrong uh, see if you can find out the problem here. We then <laughs> sent the maids into the rooms that they're in charge of, lighting these wall-mounted torches with open candles. Right? Oh. Uh, we had a uh, 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 head maid at the time, Miss Elizabeth Wilson, as head maid. She was in charge of uh, our presidential suite, which was one large suite, took up what's today 213, 15, 17, and 19. Right? Gotcha. Well, she opens the door to the largest suite on the campus, makes that discovery, 10% of the hotel, about this much, evaporates immediately, right? She's blown through the floor, she lands in the McGregor room here. She has three stories of hotel debris collapsing on top of her. It takes two and a half hours to dig her body out. When we get to her, she is still very much alive, right? Oh. Now, I know this is a big claim, but we figured this is probably uh, due to the fact that she happened to be wearing the official maid uniform at the time, which I know, 
wild plant, right? Yeah. Well done, corset. <laughs> kept that spine, in, uh, that spine intact. Kept those organs where we love organs to be. <laughs> kept her alive, but she was not okay, right? Miss Elizabeth, she had two broken ankles. Her pelvis was broken and unhinged in the back. Uh, but luckily for her, uh, she was put into a week-long coma, so she didn't know this was happening, right? She wakes up after that week-long coma in a hospital in Longmont. F.O. Stanley's leaning over her bedside. Says, Miss Elizabeth, I feel so terrible. Please allow me to pay your medical debts. To which she says, yeah, dude, you're going to pay my bills. I exploded in your hotel. Right? <laughs> so F.O., he kind of sees that that's not quite what she's expecting. Uh, a couple months later, she comes back to the hotel after healing up. She makes her way to the front desk. Waiting at the front desk is a letter from, uh, is an envelope from F.O. with her name on it, right? Now, we don't know the exact number, somewhere between ten dollars and $15,000 back then. That's three or $400,000 today. I would have not met y'all. I wouldn't be working at the Stanley. I'd be at the bank right, right? <laughs> uh, But she's a nicer person than me or whatever. She slides the envelope back across the desk, says, I don't want your money. I don't want your pity. I just want things to go back to normal. I want my job back, right? So she got her job back. She kept working as the head maid at the Stanley Hotel from after that explosion in 1911 for another 43 years until 1954. She dies in her sleep at the age of 92 years old. The next morning, spooky stuff starts happening at the state, right? <laughs> we had a couple of uh, engineers coming out at 217. They said clear as day, they passed by Miss Elizabeth. She was passing on her way into the room after they had just changed a couple light bulbs. Said, they said, good morning, gentlemen. Nothing too wild, right? Uh, her office is head made downstairs. Uh, it had its cart pushed out of it. All four of her rooms that used to be the presidential suite were taken care of. But the closest thing to like hard evidence we've got on her desk was a time card with a punch from 915 that morning, right? The logical assumption is that she's just had a little bit of a sick day. She went home a little bit early. That's the end of it, right? We sent a couple of workers down to check on her at, uh, down in town. They arrived to her house. The neighbor comes out, says, sorry. She passed away in her sleep last night. Coroner shows up, says it was most likely pretty darn near early in the evening before she just happened to make it over to the bed before she succumbed, right? Those two engineers coming out of 217, they heard that news, they quit immediately, never coming back to the state. <laughs> but that's kind of the start of spooky stuff happening around, especially 217 most famously, but in reality, all four of those rooms, 13, 15, 17, and 19, right? They were all, uh, they were all the presidential suite. Elizabeth, she seems to have a little bit of something going on in all four of those rooms. But, of course, then 20 years after she dies, Stephen King shows up, and that yeah. happens, right? Wow. Uh, but yeah, Elizabeth, she's the girl in the tub and the shining, all that good stuff. Uh, we love her. She's around with all that. We love her. I love it. Yeah. Right? But yeah, this, this is a room now we use for police on the tours. It's fine. So uh, sure. way back in the day, even before that well, that explosion back in 1911, yeah. this place was a lot more symmetrical. Of course, over uh, the music room over there only has three uh, mirrors across the front of it. Mm -hmm. we, we decided to just add a little bit more over there. So oh, wow. uh, we blew our cement, uh, symmetry, which as far as uh, post-colonial Georgian revival architecture goes, is a big no-no. <laughs> <laughs> But we still got the white columns and a little bit of the city, yeah, right? But that lodge next door is actually a lot more of a uh, accurate representation of what this place used to look like specifically, right? Got it. Uh, yeah. Uh, stuff going on in here. Every once in a while, we'll have some people see something through the uh, through the open door over here. Weird. Uh, from in here, yeah, looking through the lobby. Yeah, looking through the lobby into here, see something walking around in here. Weird. Uh, but not like clear, full-bodied apparition. Usually, it's just something dark. Right. Yeah, fun stuff. I love it. Have you had anyone on your tours yet say, "Hey, I've seen something"? Like while you were leading the tour? Oh yeah, that last tour I just had. Oh really? Some people claiming that they saw something in that hallway outside of Lucy's room. Oh, That's interesting. Right. Yeah. So where where are where are you on that now? I mean, I, I know you said you saw a thing. It was I like saw a thing. Kind of weird. It was a person. No. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm, sort of I don't deal. Know what the hell it was. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, strange. Uh, um, I've gotten some strange pictures, but I don't count those as seeing it with my own eyes. Oh, of course, I've yeah, yeah. got to make it through these nerves. <laughs> to count it, right? Sure. Even then, I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? <laughs> I'm fucking tripping ass that it works. Michael, we're back in our own homes. Finally. Finally. And we forgot to record an ending to the documentary. Yeah, we kind of did. We also left, uh, the Stanley Hotel at 3 a.m.? Yeah. 
Yeah, that was about right. Something after, like, like that. After like two hours of sleep? After like two hours of sleep, I slept on a bed that did not have any sheets or blankets on it because we couldn't find them. Yeah. I don't think that was anyone's fault. I don't want to blame the Stanley Hotel on that. But uh, but that did happen. So uh, how, how was your flight back? How was all that? We're, I mean, we're home now. So uh, anything interesting happen or? I mean, you know, have you noticed anything strange since you got back? No. Like, we bought a lot of old books, and I don't know, I might have taken one or two things from the Stanley Hotel, some light fixtures, and uh, uh but yeah, anything, anything for you? Did you, you didn't take any light fixtures, did you? No, we had a good time, and uh, we spent, spent, you know, a, a good amount of time in Colorado, and I think we had fun in a general sense, but, um, I can't say I brought any souvenirs, or... Hmm. Didn't activate any curses, did you? No, we were in that occult room, though, that was full of all those hooded chairs and uh, uh, all those mirrors to trap spirits. Yeah, about that. Uh... Shoosh. 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 Pat. 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 Pat.